demonstration of their ego. First, you need to turn the machine on, which is located here. You can press the green button. And then it'll take approximately two minutes to turn on. Um, so you'll have your patient supine. You want your patient's greater trochanters to be at this line here. Um, if they are too high or too low, you can have them scoot down accordingly. Oftentimes, I will have a sheet underneath so I can pull the sheet if their mobility is not um, great to, in order to scoot up or scoot down. So this looks good. So you can start with either feet or um, trunk. I will start with the feet and I'm just going to start attaching these. When you get to the ankle, there are um, these here to tighten up the ankle so it's nice and tight on the foot. There are also pads that can go underneath the foot if she was not wearing proper footwear. Um, but she has shoes on so we do not need those pads. Um, for the knee, you want this cuff to be want this cuff to be over um, above about two finger actually about four fingers over the knee uh, there are different size of cuffs depending on the size of your patient's thigh we are using cuff seven I can tell this is the correct cuff by putting it here it is tight and firm but it fits in this area um, appropriately so the different cuffs are labeled five to eight with five being the smallest cuff and eight being So put this in here and then I will walk around to the other side to show you how to slide these cuffs again. So I have this seven cuff. You always want the tail, the tail to be out. So for this, it's going to slide into here. There is no locking mechanism. You just have to make sure that it is um, fully in uh, this area. So then in order to get it up around her thigh, I'm pulling this black tab out and bringing it up. And then I have found the easiest way to get it in the appropriate spot is I raise the whole leg up and it will kind of sit right, it'll sit right into that, that correct spot. And then it's just Velcro again. You want it nice and snug because as she comes up into a standing position, it does tend to get looser. There are different leg length measurements here, small, medium, large, extra large, based on the leg length. Um, in order to adjust them, you just have to manually pull um, or push. Here's the waist. It just goes low over the waist and it has to be snug as well. Take these two and just snug it up. Then we have two groin straps. Here is the right groin strap. It connects here and you pull it snug. Left groin strap here. Um, for the men, we tend to pull it out laterally first and then attach it um, for improved comfort. And then we have the chest strap, and it just goes, and for the females, you either have to go above or below the breast tissue on whichever is most comfortable, and then you pull it snug by using these two. So we have our patient set up on here already, so you need to change the thigh cuff size to what we did previously around the thighs. And then to point out, we do have FES for the lower extremities, the hamstrings, the quads, the gastrox, and the tibialis anterior. If you're not using FES, uncheck that. And then the next step would be to take you to range of motion measurement. It will have a safety information screen that asks, is the harness secured properly? Is the foot plate fixation locked properly? And are the forecasters in the locked position? except if all those things are correct. And now for range of motion measurement, 
you come to each leg one at a time and you're going to just move the patient's legs through the range of motion all the way up all the way down with gentle range of motion into knee extension and then you do the same thing for the right leg all the way up all the way down with gentle range of motion into knee extension and then once you've done that, you can hit training. And now you are ready to start the program. Before bringing the patient to the full upright position, you need to make sure that the table is all the way elevated. And then you're ready to start. The default cadence will be 16 steps per minute. And then once the patient starts, you can then begin raising into an upright standing position. Depending on the patient's condition, you can go in increments or you can go all at once. So the goal for this patient is to get her to the full upright position. Oftentimes I will remove the pillow when they are fully upright. So if they are in a crouched position, which frequently happens, you can use this button here to make the leg length longer for her to appear in a more upright position. The goal with this patient is to try to get to bilateral full knee extension and full knee flexion, which can be um, changed on here on the screen. These range of motion measurements are not um, accurate. I go based on what I'm seeing versus the measurements on here. If you like to change the cadence, you can make it go faster. And then guidance force is how much work the patient is doing. Currently, the machine is 100%. Uh, meaning the machine is doing 100% and the patient is doing 0%. If I wanted the patient to do um, more activity along with the machine, I would decrease the guidance force and then have the patient help with the movement. This max leg load loading shows how much uh, weight the patient is loading through the feet, the foot plates in kilograms. Hip extension is at zero. If you wanted increased hip extension, you can use this button here or the corresponding, oops, I'm sorry, this button here, or the corresponding um, button on here to get increased hip extension. And you can see that the tilt angle currently is 92 degrees. Once the session is done, you're going to have your patient come down Gradually is always best. And then while she's coming down, I'll point out the emergency stop um, if anything were to go wrong. And then once she is fully down, you can stop the machine on the computer by pressing the stop.